We've been covering a lot of visual effects on this channel lately, and most of them, if you were to see them in a movie or a TV show, would be pretty obvious to spot. But there are a lot of practical visual effects that are used all the time that are a lot harder for the viewer to spot. For example, the split screen. Split screen can be used for a whole bunch of different purposes. Here on YouTube, it's most often used when you're trying to clone yourself. But in the world of film and television, split screening can often be used to combine takes of the same scene. Two of the reasons you might want to do this would be to speed up or slow down the pacing of a scene or to get the best performance out of all of the actors. To do a split screen effect, add your two clips that you're trying to merge together to a fusion composition and head to the fusion page. Then use a polygon or B spline to mask the area of the foreground clip that you want to use in the scene. Then in the inspector, soften the edge to hide the edge of the mask. It's important to note that if your footage was shot handheld, you'll have to track one clip onto the other. I'm not going to go into how to do that in this video, but let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see a tutorial on. Another common effect that editors should know how to do is object removal. This is super important if you're shooting a super wide shot that makes it impossible to hide any microphones or lighting. Now, both DaVinci Resolve and After Effects have object removal effects, but those don't always provide the best result. When this happens, we have to go old school. In order to remove an object, you'll need both the clip that contains the object you want to remove and a clean plate. Place your clean plate on video track one and your main shot on video track two. Then create a fusion composition from these two clips and head to the fusion page. In the fusion page, add a polygon node to your media in two node and draw a mask around the object you want to remove. Then in the inspector, select invert and soften the edge to hide the edge of the mask. Again, if your footage was shot handheld, you might have to track your clips in order to match the movement. So to make things easier on yourself, you can shoot on a tripod and add movement in post. Our next practical effect is matte compositing. This is the most complicated effect on our list, but it's also the most versatile. Matte compositing is typically used to place a still image onto a moving portion of a shot, like adding a logo to a van, or in our example, eye replacement. If you've ever wondered how actors that play dead or unconscious bodies are able to keep their eyes so still, this is how. To do a matte composite, use a planar tracker to track your actor's face. Then add a time stretcher node, set it to the frame that you want to freeze and remove any keyframes. Add a matte control to your time stretcher node, then create a polygon mask around your actor's eyes and connect it to the garbage mat input of your matte control. Next, create a planar transform and delete your planar tracker from the composition. Connect your matte control to your planar transform and merge the planar transform over your original image. The last practical effect that you should know is how to replace a sky. Sky replacements are done all the time and can completely change the look of a scene. Now, I'm not gonna show you how to replace a sky in this video because I already created a full tutorial on that. So click here to check that out. And until next time, don't forget to go out and make stuff. Thanks for watching.